Good morning everyone, I'm Vasily Varlamos. Looks like another stormy evening for us in southern Idaho. However, tonight's storms should be weaker than the others. I'll have more updates on those storms coming up. Good morning, I'm Ashley Carter and coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, officials in Portland passing some new rules. The impact it's said to have on the city's homeless. And good morning, I'm Sarah Jacobson. This morning, construction here in Boise becoming a real headache for businesses. How they say they're being impacted. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for waking up with us. You're looking live at Indian Creek Plaza on this Thursday or Friday Eve, as we like to call it around here. It's June 8th, 2023. Now we've had some crazy weather over the past few days. That's putting it lightly. Yeah. Yeah, heavy rain, winds, hail, not to mention that lightning that actually hit our station earlier this week. <laughs> yeah, and it's not quite over yet, too. We could see some more thunderstorms later on this evening. They're looking like they're going to impact the mountains as well, but we could even see some scattered thunderstorms here in the Treasure Valley this afternoon, too, where we'll see cloudy skies all day today. So those stormy conditions sticking around, and now last night we didn't get that downpour that we got on Tuesday, but boy, we got some wind. Yeah, take a look at this. It took down branches around Boise, even some trees, as you see, this tree was on the westbound side of Park Center near Apple Street, and there was another one down farther down the street. And we'll update you on what's next storm wise and hopefully you don't see anything like this. This is what I was dealing with just yesterday. I was dealing with some flooding here in my apartment and we're going to see some more flooding as well, especially over in the West Central and Central Mountains as well. The West Central and Boise Mountains as well as the Upper Weezer River locations are in a flood watch that's going to be trigger at noon today and then that's going to last through the evening. Now those areas could see up to two inches of rain later on tonight. Now here in the Treasure Valley, we are looking at some scattered showers as well. Here's a look at the severe weather outlook. Much of the entire gem state is looking at some thunderstorms. They'll be they won't be as severe as the last two days as well, but we may see some of those thunderstorms. Here's a look at the chance of precipitation over the next coming days. We may just see some widely scattered showers here in the Treasure Valley. Again, most of those thunderstorms are expected to impact the mountains, and then on Friday morning we'll see some more scattered showers. But after that, that precipitation is looking like it's going to dissipate. We'll see partly cloudy skies throughout much of the weekend, and then by Tuesday morning is the next best chance we got at some precipitation. I'll give you some more updates coming up. And many of you like Vasily also capturing photos and videos during the storm. This photo was taken near the Caldwell Sunny Slope area by JP Jones. If you have weather photos, CBS 2 wants to see them. Just go to IdahoNews.com slash chime in and Vasily will be back with more on your weather in just a bit. But first. New this morning, former Vice President Mike Pence wasting no time on the campaign trail. He participated in a CNN town hall last night, just hours after launching his bid for the White House. The event taking place in Iowa, it included questions from GOP voters. During the event, Pence touted his pro-life views and vowed to ban gen gender affirming care for minors. Now, Pence also criticized his former boss, Donald Trump, over the Capitol riots and for once calling Vladimir Putin, quote, a genius. Now, Trump and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis are currently leading the field. The Supreme Court expected to release some decisions later on this morning. The court weighing several big decisions this month, including affirmative action in college admissions, certain LGBTQ rights, lawsuits over Biden's student loan program, and voting rights. And New York Governor Katie Hochul urging residents to stay indoors, saying smoke from Canadian wildfires making it unsafe to be outside. Now, Hochul emphasizes the poor air quality. It can impact anyone, not just those vulnerable populations. In an effort to protect people, New York making a million and 95 masks available to their public. They'll be giving them out at state facilities, including state parks and subway stations, as well as through local governments. Hochul says the smoke could potentially clear up over this weekend, but there is no guarantee the smoke will stay away. Well, FBI agents are expected to transfer Jordan Vandersloot to the U.S. today. Now, Vandersloot is the prime suspect in the disappearance of Natalie Holloway, that Alabama teen who was last seen with the Dutch National and two others 18 years ago in Aruba. He was indicted in 2010 on U.S. federal charges of extortion and wire fraud in connection with the plot to sell information about the whereabouts of Holloway's remains. A team is expected to return to Alabama with Vandersloot after he is turned over to the U.S. authorities. He has been held at a Peru prison since 2012, 
when he was convicted and sentenced to 28 years in prison for the murder of 21 year old Stephanie Flores. Well, change coming to the streets of Portland starting as of next month. It'll be illegal for homeless people to camp outside during the day. That was following a late vote last night by their city council. Now next month, a daytime camping ban goes into effect across the city, along with other restrictions to sleeping outside. Mayor Ted Wheeler, commissioners and commissioners Dan Ryan and Renee Gonzalez voting in favor, saying that crime and drug use has to be addressed. We have a chemical warfare, basically. We're hearing every single day. We're seeing it every day on the streets of Portland. We need to show progress on unsanctioned camping. But not everyone agrees that this is the right direction. Sitting in the front row, a silent protest. They say the punishment could lead to homelessness being treated as a crime. We need multiple tools. We need shelter beds. Uh, we need these temporary alternative shelter sites, which are also for people who maybe won't access, uh, you know, uh, traditional shelters and they need another form of um, engagement and service. While the new restrictions go into effect next month, the mayor's office says enforcement won't be phased in until later. Well, New York City suing more than 30 counties in the state for refusing to accommodate migrants. The move coming as the city is struggling to find housing for asylum seekers. Now, last month, Mayor Eric Adams started to look to hotels outside of the city to accommodate those new arrivals. But the move triggered several county governments to issue emergency declarations, barring migrants from staying at local hotels on the city's dime. Rockland and Orange counties were among the first to issue such orders. Officials say they cannot afford to house those migrants. Well, the state of Florida is now claiming responsibility for flying three dozen migrants from Texas to California over the weekend, saying the trip was a voluntary one and officials in Sacramento aren't buying it. I don't want to talk about who may have done this, who likely did this. Um, they, he, are not worth dignifying. California investigators say some of those migrants told them that they were recruited with the promises of employment. The state's attorney general saying it's investigating whether those involved in the transportation violated laws against false imprisonment or kidnapping. Now this comes after Florida's transported nearly 50 migrants from Texas to Martha's Vineyard last year, which is also under investigation. Now Florida Governor Ron DeSantis says he's just trying to help. Those migrants were being treated horribly by Biden. They were hungry, homeless. They had no, no opportunity at all. The state of Florida, it was volunteer, offered transport to sanctuary jurisdictions. Meantime, Democrats in California arguing those migrants are being used as political pawns. Well, back here in Boise, construction causing some problem for local businesses as several apartments and high rises go up and reconstruction on 11th Street continues. Now, nearby businesses say the headache just isn't worth it. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of communication between the different entities involved and there's a lot of passing the buck. So somebody else is always to blame and there's not really anybody who can be held accountable. Jacob Brzonek, co-owner of Three Pete Vintage, says construction delays, they just keep piling on. Now at one point, he says his main entrance was blocked off to shoppers. Access to stores also being impacted down at the record exchange. That's according to co-owner Chad Dryden. I see even more challenging the parking has been some of the streets closures. At one point, we had both Idaho and 11th Street closed at the same time over a weekend, and weekends are our busiest times. The economic development team gave an update to the Boise City Council on construction problems earlier this week. Not that much can be done about immediate problems, but in the future, the team hopes to better coordinate with ACHD, setting limits on where those closures can happen and for how long. And big news for higher education here in the Treasure Valley. The College of Western Idaho now expanding. They're adding several new buildings over the next few years. Three major projects are currently in the works. Groundbreaking on the first building is set for the next six months. CWI's president, Gordon Jones, saying the college, it's grown in tandem with the Treasure Valley. This represents the continued development and the growth 
that we see in the valley and as a community college, our need to meet that growth. Here at 100 acres on our Nampa campus, this is the perfect footprint for meeting that need for today, tomorrow, and into our children's generations. For more information on the expansion, just head to our website. Well, it's been a storming last couple evenings here in the Treasure Valley, but we have been waking up to some sunny mornings. This morning, much different. We're waking up to some cloudy skies with some precipitation moving across much of southwestern Idaho. Here in the Treasure Valley, we're just seeing a few spotty showers, but we're seeing some showers moving across the Idaho-Nevada border, as well as some showers over in eastern Oregon right now. Now, zooming in here on the Treasure Valley, we are seeing a few showers near New Plymouth starting to spring up right now. We're also seeing a little bit of showers popping up near Emmett. We may see a few showers go into Emmett here in the next 30 minutes or so. But right now here in Boise, we're just waking up to those cloudy skies. We're sitting at 66 degrees right now, so quite a mild morning for us. And those winds currently at 9 miles an hour, however, not affecting that feels like temperature at all. Staying true to form at 66 degrees. Now we'll see that cloud, those cloudy skies for much of the morning. And then by the afternoon, we'll start to see some partly cloudy skies, but later on in the evening is where we may start to see a few scattered showers. And we may even see some thunderstorms as well. However, most of those thunderstorms look like they're going to impact the mountains. Now we'll see those wind speeds start to pick up this afternoon and evening as well and as those storms begin to move in we'll see a top wind speed of 10 miles an hour but parts of the upper valley today could see wind gusts of up to 35 miles an hour and then in terms of temperatures we'll reach the mid 70s by noon leading to our high today of 80 degrees expected to arrive at around 3 p.m. now over the next couple of days we'll continue to see those evening thunderstorm chances that'll last through Friday high temperatures still going to be in the 80s and we'll see a partly cloudy weekend as we begin to dry out now those mild mornings are going to continue we'll see a low of 60 degrees tomorrow night tomorrow night and then in terms of those temperatures. We'll see those temperatures drop down to our average of 79 degrees on Friday, but then we'll jump back into the mid 80s on Sunday and we'll stay around the mid 80s as we head into next week. I'll give you a look at the extended forecast here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there at 511 this Thursday morning, as you can see, everything running nice and smooth. No backups on your screen and not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down if you're starting your morning drive anytime soon. So when you hop in the car, start your morning off with KBOI. That's on 670 AM or 93.1 FM, where you can get even more team traffic updates. Straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, a crowded race for president with several GOP candidates announcing their bid this week. How the number of choices may impact who gets the nomination. Plus, Biden's student loan forgiveness still on the table. The challenge it faces next. And it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. Baby boomers, they're more than two times as likely to do this compa daily compared to millennials. The answer was taking vitamins. Good reminder for all us millennials. All right, now for today's question. The average person touches this five times an hour without even realizing it. All right, folks, what do you think it is? This is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 515. Welcome back. We're already in the double digits with several new contenders joining the, joining the growing list of Republican presidential candidates just this week alone. But how many is too many? Janae Bowens explains the impact of having several political options. There's about a dozen notable Republicans vying for their party's presidential nomination. Political experts tell me the long list could be solidifying a shoe in You know, I haven't made a decision yet. Hector Rivera has more than 500 days to decide who will get his vote for president. We need to find somebody that can bring people together. He's got a lot of Republican choices. Chris Christie, Tim Scott, Nikki Haley, Mike Pence, Vivek Ramaswamy, Ryan Binkley, Larry Elder, Doug Burgum, Perry Johnson, Asa Hutchinson, Ron DeSantis, and former President Donald Trump. In 2016, one of the ways that Trump made it to the presidency was by win famously winning over a field of 16 others who are running against him. Head of the Presidential Leadership Initiative at the Bipartisan Policy Center, Tevi Choi says, voters aren't really paying attention to the number of presidential candidates, and there's a big gap between what folks know about Trump compared to the others. The question is, will those six to 10 split the non-Trump vote, allowing Trump to get through with the plurality again? According to 538, Trump is leading with 53.8%. 
Troy says attention should now turn to the debates. He blew away the other candidates in the last series of debates. Oh, oh I know you're a tough guy, Jeb. And, it's, and we need to have a leader. That First of all, Rand Paul shouldn't even be on this stage. He's this time it's going to be different because every candidate up there is going to have a plan for Trump. The first Republican presidential primary debate is in Milwaukee on August 23rd. Now, if there are enough qualifying contenders, there will be a second debate the day after. I'm Janae Bowens for the National Desk. And the Biden White House's federal student loan forgiveness program is moving forward after President Biden vetoes a bill to strike it down. However, the bill still faces legal challenges and opposition from Republicans and some moderate Democrats. He's continued to pursue new government spending from his nearly trillion dollar student loan giveaway to a budget that in a few short years would have us spending $10 trillion annually. I'm not going to back down on my efforts to help tens of millions of working and middle class families. That's why I'm going to veto this bill. And don't forget, some of the same members of Congress who want to cut student aid personally receive loans to keep their small businesses low during the pandemic. Now, the legality of the loan forgiveness program is in the hands of the Supreme Court. The justices are expected to issue a decision on it as soon yes, as sir. today. The bill offers to forgive up to $20,000 in debt for students who went to college on Pell Grants and $10,000 for those without if specific requirements are met. All right, let's switch gears because driving into work this morning, uh, drove over a few branches that had blown away. Yeah. Um, a very windy night across the region, and I know we're bracing for some more storms today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some more storms today. They're looking like they're mostly going to impact the mountains later on this afternoon and evening, but we do still have a chance of seeing some precipitation, about a 40% chance here in the Treasure Valley with a chance of some thunderstorms as well. But it's, it is going to be weaker than the last few days as this storm continues to move closer and closer into the Gem State. Right now we're dealing with some south Southeasterly winds blowing that storm actually westbound right now. It's been moving east over the last couple of days. It was originally in California and as it's moved closer and closer to us here in the gem state, it has actually started to weaken a little bit as well. So we are seeing a little bit of showers right now over in the Long Valley and over McCall right now. Those will continue throughout the morning and that precipitation is going to move over into eastern Oregon as well. And we may see a little bit of precipitation over in the lower valley. That'll be later on this morning. But then after that, by the afternoon, we'll see some partly cloudy skies here in the Treasure Valley as some thunderstorms develop over the Owyhees and just east of Mountain Home. Now those will continue into the later on in the evening, but then after that we'll actually start to just see some partly cloudy skies later on in the evening. And then tomorrow morning we're going to see some partly cloudy to mostly sunny skies here in the Treasure Valley, but we may see some more storms on Friday night as well. 81 degrees going to be the high in Boise and Emmett. 80 looking like the high over in Caldwell and Nampa and 81 also going to be the high in Mountain Home. 81 looking like the high over in Ontario and moving up to the mountains. 65 going to be the high in McCall. So we do have that chance of some thunderstorms later on this evening, both tonight and tomorrow night. But after that, we'll see some drier conditions move in over the weekend with some partly cloudy skies. That'll allow for some warming high temperatures going to jump into the mid 80s on Sunday and we'll stay in the low to mid 80s as we head into next week. Meanwhile, over in the mountains, they're going to see those scattered thunderstorms both Thursday and Friday, and those storms are going to continue into Saturday and Sunday. We'll see some more showers into early next week. High temperature is going to be in the upper 60s over the next three days, but they'll jump into the low 70s as they head into next week. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there at 520 this Thursday morning, as you can see on your screen, not too much happening out there so far. Everything moving along smooth and not hearing of any incidents or reports that should get in your way if you're hitting the road anytime soon. So when you hop in the car, start your morning off with even more team traffic updates. That'll be on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, a new program may help veterans address their mental health for free. We take a look at Strive. Plus, are kids struggling with mental health as well? How social media may be making the impact. This is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 523 on your Thursday. Welcome back. A free program to help veterans and many others in need of mental health help is now expanding. Medical reporter Liz Bonus sharing how it strives to save lives. Hey there, everybody. The Strive Mental Health Treatment Program reduces suicide attempts and saves lives. According to researchers working with members of our military, now they are expanding this program and it's open to anyone nationwide. 
What started as pain from a leg injury in the Marine Corps eventually led Kelsey Chrisman to the STRIVE program. She said at the time she felt like I wasn't going anywhere. Everything was a mistake. Um, weirdly enough, my chain of command thought I was faking it. I'm like, no, like I hurt to walk. That hurt eventually led to a diagnosis of post-traumatic stress disorder. It got magnified, she says, when on the same side, she lost two of her toes in an accident at home. I had to take the time to realize that this is my new normal. The Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center runs the STRIVE program and provided this video. STRIVE stands for the Suicide and Trauma Reduction Initiative for Veterans. I spoke with Justin Baker, the director, about how it's a research program that actually provides treatment through virtual counseling for just two weeks. We do really rapid treatment so you can get better and back to your daily life. The results have been astounding. Baker says at least 7 in 10 who meet the criteria for the study of having PTSD or suicidal thoughts develop personalized crisis plans and coping skills. They continue to use those in times of emotional distress. In, in some ways, it's actually less painful because instead of dragging it out, you just get it done. People can set aside two weeks to focus on therapy much easier than they can set aside three months to focus on therapy. It's going to be hard, but it's going to be worth it. Here's what you need to know to sign up. There is a website as well as a phone number, 614-257-3877. All of this, again, free to you. And because of the virtual counseling option, you can get this help no matter where you live. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Now back to you. Last month, the Surgeon General issued an advisory about the effects social media has on your mental health. Heading into summer, many parents thinking about setting boundaries between kids and their devices. Now, the number of kids and teenagers with anxiety and depression, it shot up about 30% in recent years. According to the Department of Health and Human Services, many don't get the care they need. Now, doctors at Cincinnati Children's Hospital, they recently published recommendations. One of them, having more mental health providers at pediatricians' offices to help identify treatment needs early on in a person's life. While well, people who have trouble falling or staying asleep may be more likely to have a stroke, that's according to a study published in the journal in the American Academy of Neurology. Now, those with at least one to four insomnia symptoms have a 16% increased risk of stroke compared to those with no sleep issues. Researchers noted that the symptoms do not cause strokes, only that there's an association. And scientists say a new heart transplant method could expand the number of donor hearts by 30%, potentially saving thousands more lives. Most transplanted hearts are from donors who are brain dead, meaning the body is left on a ventilator to keep the heart beating until it's recovered. During donation after circulatory death, organs go without oxygen for a while before they can be recovered. Now, doctors can use a machine to reanimate the hearts before they planned transplant. Coming up on CBS 2 News, the president has a big meeting set for today at the White House, what he hopes to discuss with the UK's prime minister. And don't forget about our question of the day. We'll read some of your guesses. This is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 529, almost 530. Welcome back. Former Vice President Mike Pence wasting no time on the campaign trail. He participated in a CNN town hall just hours after launching his bid for the White House. The event took place in Iowa and included questions from GOP voters. During the event, Pence touted his pro-life values and vowed to ban gender affirming care for minors. Now, Pence also criticized his former boss, Donald Trump, over the Capitol riots and for once calling Vladimir Putin a, quote, genius. But he pushed back when asked about the classified documents probe into the former president. We're the symbol of justice in the world, and the, the, the serious matter, which has already happened once in New York, of indicting a former president of the United States sends a terrible message to the world. I hope the DOJ thinks better of it and resolves these issues without an indictment. Sir Despite just announcing his campaign, Pence, he's been polling in the single digits with Trump and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis leading the field. Well, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen told CNBC yesterday that she would not be surprised to see more banks consolidate. 
She says smaller banks, they're considering the move in response to a growing pressure on earnings. Now, Yellen also warns that banks are facing commercial real estate difficulties due to higher interest rates and remote work arrangements. But despite this, she did project a positive outlook for the banking system. My overall read is that the level of capital and liquidity uh, in the banking system is strong and that um, well, there will be some pain associated with this that banks should be able to handle the strain. Yellen's comments come after federal regulators seized and sold several mid-sized banks earlier this year, including Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank. Well, FBI agents are expected to transfer Jordan Vandersloot to the U.S. today. Vandersloot is the prime suspect in the disappearance of Natalie Holloway, the Alabama teen who was last seen with the Dutch National and two others 18 years ago in Aruba. Now, he was indicted in 2010 on U.S. federal charges of extortion and wire fraud. That was in connection with the plot to sell information about the whereabouts of Holloway's remains. A team is expected to return to Alabama with Vandersloot after he is turned over to U.S. authorities. He has been held at a Peru prison since 2012 when he was convicted and sentenced to 28 years in prison for the murder of 21-year-old Stephanie Flores. Well, change coming to the streets of Portland. Starting next month, it'll be legal for homeless people to camp outside during the day following a late vote last night by the city council. Next month, that daytime camping ban goes into effect across Portland, along with other restrictions to sleeping outside. Mayor Ted Wheeler and commissioners Dan Ryan and Renee Gonzalez voting in favor, saying after that, crime and drugs use has to be addressed. We have a chemical warfare, basically. We're hearing every single day. We're seeing it every day on the streets of Portland. We need to show progress on unsanctioned camping. But not everyone agreeing with this is the right direction. Sitting in the front row, you can see a silent protest. They say the punishment could lead to homelessness being treated as a crime. We need multiple tools. We need shelter beds. Uh, we need these temporary alternative shelter sites, which are also for people who maybe won't access, uh, you know, uh, traditional shelters and they need another form of um, engagement and service. While the new restrictions go into effect as of next month, the mayor's office saying enforcement won't be phased in until later. Well, New York City is now suing more than 30 counties in the state for refusing to accommodate migrants. The move coming as the city struggling to find housing for asylum seekers. Last month, Mayor Eric Adams starting to look to outside hotels or hotels outside the city to accommodate those new arrivals. But the move triggered several county governments to issue emergency declarations barring migrants from staying at local hotels on the city's dime. Now, Rockland and Orange counties were among the first to issue such orders. Officials there say they cannot afford to house those migrants. And Florida claiming responsibility for flying three dozen migrants from Texas to Florida or pardon me, to California over the weekend. Now saying that that trip was voluntary. Officials in Sacramento, however, aren't buying it. I don't want to talk about who may have done this, who likely did this. Um, they, he, are not worth dignifying. California investigators saying some of those migrants told them that they were recruited with promises of employment. The state's attorneys general investigating whether that involved those involved in the transportation violated laws against false imprisonment or kidnapping. This coming after Florida transported nearly 50 migrants from Texas to Martha's Vineyard last year, which is also under investigation. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis saying he's just trying to help. Those migrants were being treated horribly by Biden. They were hungry, homeless. They had no, no opportunity at all. The state of Florida, it was volunteer, offered transport to sanctuary jurisdictions. Democrats in California arguing that the migrants, they're being used as political pawns. Well, President Biden will welcome NATO Secretary General Jen Stolenberg to the White House on Monday. The two leaders are expected to talk about the upcoming NATO summit in Lithuania. White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre says they will review preparations together including the work to further strengthen allied, uh, allied deterrence and defense, 
build on the 2014 Whale Summit Defense Investment Pledge and deepen NATO's partnership. The talks will also focus on allies' support for Ukraine amid Russia's ongoing invasion. The NATO summit is scheduled for July 11th through the 13th. Meantime, President Biden is hosting the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom at the White House today. The White House says Biden and Sunak are expected to discuss Ukraine, China and international cooperation. The president has already met with him multiple times since he became Prime Minister back in October. The Associated Press reports that Sunak is also expected to push for the UK's Defense Secretary to succeed the outgoing NATO Secretary General. And Taiwan activated its defense systems this morning after reporting 37 Chinese military aircraft flying into the island's air defense zone. China, which views democratically governed Taiwan as its own territory, has over the past three years regularly flown its air force into the skies near the island. Though not into Taiwan's territorial airspace, it's the latest in a series of recent actions that have raised tensions between the U.S. and Taiwan. China's defense ministry did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Well, back here in Boise, construction causing problems for local businesses. Now, as several apartment high rises are going up and reconstruction on 11th Street continues, well, now nearby businesses say that headache just isn't worth it. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of communication between the different entities involved and there's a lot of passing the buck. So somebody else is always to blame and there's not really anybody who can be held accountable. Jacob Brizonic, owner of Three Pete Vintage, says construction delays, they keep piling on. He says at one point his main entrance was blocked off to shoppers. Access to stores also being impacted down at the record exchange, according to co-owner Chad Dryden. I see even more challenging than parking has been some of the streets closures. At one point we had both Idaho and 11th Street closed at the same time over a weekend and weekends are our busiest times. The economic development team gave an update to Boise City Council on the construction problems earlier this week. Not that much can be done about the immediate problems, but in the future, the team says they hope to better coordinate with ACHD, setting limits on where those closures happen and for how long. Well, big news for higher education here in the Treasure Valley. The College of Western Idaho expanding. They're adding several new buildings over the next few years. Three major projects are in the works, with groundbreaking on the first building set for the next six months. CWI's president, Gordon Jones, saying the college has grown in tandem with the Treasure Valley. This represents the continued development and the growth that we see in the valley and as a community college, our need to meet that growth. Here at 100 acres on our Nampa campus, this is the perfect footprint for meeting that need for today, tomorrow, and into our children's generations. If you want to learn more about the expansion, just head to our website. Well, good morning everyone and this morning actually looking a lot different from the past two mornings. We've been waking up to some clear skies and then those storms would roll in this in the afternoons and evenings. But this morning we are waking up to some storms over the Owyhees right now and over parts of eastern Oregon. As you can see there a few thunderstorms this morning as well. That is just south right now of Owyhee and Adrian, but they are seeing some showers near Adrian right now as well as most of the areas over on the Oregon Idaho border right now. Ontario seeing some showers this morning and parts of New Plymouth and Fruitland as well as Weezer are seeing some showers as well. Now here in Boise, we're just seeing those cloudy skies this morning. We're sitting at 66 degrees right now, so quite a mild morning with those southeasterly winds of about nine miles an hour blowing as well. So a bit breezy out there this this morning, and we'll likely see that cloud cover throughout the morning. By the afternoon, we'll start to see some partly cloudy skies, but we may see some showers later on this evening. Wind speeds will also start to pick up later this evening as well. We could see wind gusts of up to 35 miles an hour here in Boise, and temperature is going to jump up into the mid 70s by noon, leading to our high today of 81 degrees. Now we are do we have a flood watch in effect for most of the Boise West Central and the Upper Weezer River as well. Those mountains and the Upper Weezer River areas could get up to two inches of rain later on today. So we do have some flood watches in effect for those areas. As for here in the Treasure Valley, we do have a chance of some thunderstorms both tonight and tomorrow night. High temperature is going to be in the 80s and we'll likely see a partly cloudy weekend as well as that precipitation moves out of the region. Now we'll drop to our average of 79 degrees on Friday, just approaching that 80 degree high and then we'll jump to 80 degrees on Saturday. Saturday. Then those highs are going to jump into the mid 80s on Sunday and will likely stay between the low and mid 80s over the next couple of days after that. I'll give you a look at the extended forecast here in just a few minutes.
Thank you, Vasily. CBS2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there at 541 this morning, as you can see, gradually starting to see some more folks out there in some of our camera shots, especially that I-84 Cloverdale camera angle. But everything moving along nice and smooth. Not hearing of any incidents or reports that should slow you down if you're starting your Thursday morning commute anytime soon. So when you hop in the car, be sure to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for even more team traffic updates. Now it's time for our question of the day. That question, the average person touches this five times an hour without even realizing it. Mm -hmm. What is it? I'm going to go with your TV remote. I mean, I don't know, maybe you're changing the volume, maybe you're doing all that. I mean, I don't know if you're watching TV every single hour of the day, but, you know, it's possible, you know, that could add up over time. What do you guys think? Yeah, yeah that's a good one. I like that one. All right, what are you thinking, Ash? I'm thinking your face. Oh, Ooh, 100%. Percent. Mm -hmm. See, I was going to I was going to say my hair. Oh, another one. I right like one that too. one too. But, but kind of the same, you know, area thing going on. All right, let's see what folks at home have to say. Denise oh, says you. your hair. There you go. Now, that's a great guess. It's hard not to when you're not, especially when you're not thinking about it. Yeah. Um, Wes says their cell phone. That was oh. another one I was thinking about going with too. I mean, who mm. doesn't have their hands on their phone all day? Yeah. yeah. Five times an hour. Doug says your mouth. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yep, another good one. Anywhere around your face seems like a good. Yeah. As I'm touching my face right now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you think you know the answer, you have an hour and 15 minutes to get those guesses in. You can guess on our Facebook page or Twitter on our question of the day post. And we'll read more of your guesses throughout the morning and reveal the answer at the end of the show right before CBS This Morning. And coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, air quality becoming dangerous across the Northeast. A look at those warnings in place there this morning. This is CBS 2 News this morning. Well, here at CBS 2, we know this firsthand lightning here in the West. It's a big concern. Now, officials down in California say storms have already sparked several blazes in the northern part of the state. Our Sinclair sister station in Redding spoke with Alex McMath, who is the assistant forest manager on the Shasta Trinity. He says they have strategies in place during fire season for when these fires pop up. We can't disregard them. We have to pay attention and manage all the fires. So uh, whether it's a lightning fire or a human caused fire or some type of equipment fire, we have to respond to that fire. Those are prioritized, um, you know, firefighter and public safety first, number one life, and then uh, private property and then resources. The North State is no stranger to lightning fires from the August complex back in 2020 to the Monument and McFar McFarland fires in 2021. So McBath says these are a top priority. Thankfully, conditions are favorable right now, but the North State heats up quickly which can cause a fast spread from fires later in the fire season. And take a look at this. Hundreds of uncontrolled bla forest fires blazing across Canada, threatening critical infrastructure, forcing evacuations, and sending a blanket of smoke wafting into U.S. cities. Now this year, flames are moving rapidly in the country's east, making it the worst ever start to this season. About 9.5 million acres already burned this morning. That's around 15 times the 10 year average and all of those blazes sending smoke down to the northeast US. Now it's creating air quality concerns. Our sister station in Albany, New York, saying they've seen smoke move in and out throughout the capital region. Now, since Monday, the New York State Department of Environmental Conservations and the State Department of Health, they've issued air quality warnings due to the sheer amount of smoke. It smells like fire, like all day. Most people are wearing masks. I couldn't find one and I was late this morning, so I didn't. In almost every region around New York, health advisories have been put in place from the poor air quality. Officials recommending school districts to keep kids inside and suspend any outdoor activities. And a similar site in Washington, D.C. Our Sinclair sister station there says it did not take long for airplanes to vanish in the haze. People should consider staying indoors as much as they can. If they have to go outside, consider staying safe by limiting strenuous activity. So, for example, if you were going to go for a jog today, consider going for a walk. If you work outside, uh, consider taking frequent breaks, drinking water. And I think all of us remember these. Consider wearing a face mask if you're out as well. 
Leaders in the area say they are keeping an eye on the air quality levels leading into a very busy weekend in the district. And in Ohio, officials saying a lot of toxic air slowly drifting into their region. The Southwest Ohio Air Quality Agency extending its alert today. Now this, coupled with a dry stretch there over the past few weeks, not the best combination. We definitely need rain, especially up north. We could use the rain down here. We need the wind direction to change. Um, right now, the wind keeps coming from the north, bringing that air pollutant our way. After weeks without significant rain, officials say they're also seeing double the number of fire calls for this time of the year, which is also contributing to the air quality. There could, there could start to be serious problems if these conditions do continue for over 24 hours. And the White House also urging Americans to take care. White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre says President Biden is receiving regular updates on the smoke. She says the administration has been in touch with state and local leaders, including those in Michigan, Illinois, and New York. We encourage everyone in the impacted areas to listen, to listen to their state and local officials. Check in on your neighbors, check in on your, your friends and your family. Take precautions, especially if you, are, if you have health conditions. Jean-Pierre calling it an alarming example of how the climate crisis is impacting our lives. She notes the Biden administration is in touch with the government of Canada. The White House has deployed more than 600 U.S. firefighters and personnel to help Canada battle those fires. And because of that smoky air, Major League Baseball postponing games over on the East Coast. Last night's Yankee game was canceled. Also canceled, the Phillies and the Tigers, even the WNBA postponing games, and they play indoors. Oh, we know it all too well here in the West. That smoke can be so debilitating mm -hmm. throughout the day. I mean, hope everyone's staying safe out there. Conditions the second worst in the country, or second worst in the world over in New York. Yeah, no, they are. Their air quality mm -hmm. not looking good. We're definitely mm -hmm. thinking about them. Yeah. But over here on the West Side, we're still dealing with some of those um, thunderstorms. Mm -hmm. uh, another round planned for tonight? Yeah, especially over in the West Central and Boise Mountains, they are going to see some thunderstorms later on this afternoon and possibly even this morning as well. We're seeing a few thunderstorms over in Eastern Oregon. Oregon this morning as well as this storm is getting a, a gust of southeasterly wind pushing this storm actually over the gem state right now. This, this storm was over California just a few days ago and has since moved north and as it's moved closer and closer into the gem state, it's also beginning to weaken as well. That's why our chances of seeing some thunderstorms has dissipated a little bit today. We'll likely see some weaker storms if we do see some storms later on this afternoon as this storm continues to impact the mountains. Now it's bringing some rain already to the Long Valley and McCall right now. That'll continue throughout the morning as those storms continue to move east and impact eastern Oregon. Now we are going to continue to see some storms like we're seeing right now over in Ontario and along the Idaho Oregon border. That's going to continue throughout the morning, but then by the afternoon we'll start to see some showers develop near Mountain Home. Those showers may not impact us here in the Treasure Valley. We may just see a few spotty showers to scattered showers here in the Treasure Valley. Again, most of those thunderstorms are going to impact the West Central and Boise Mountains. 81 degrees going to be the high in Boise Mountain Home as well as over in Emmett today 80 looking like the high over in Caldwell and Nampa and then moving up to the mountain 65 going to be the high over McCall. Here's a look at the seven day forecast. We'll continue to have that thunderstorm chance in the evenings and afternoons tomorrow, but after that will likely dry out as we head into the weekend. We'll see some partly cloudy skies. High temperature is going to jump up into the mid 80s on Sunday and we'll stay between the low and mid 80s as we head throughout next week. Meanwhile, over in the mountains, they'll continue to see those scattered thunderstorms into Saturday and they'll see some showers continue into early next week as well. Those high temperatures are going to range between the upper 60s and low 70s over the next week in the mountains. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there at 552 this Friday Eve, as you can see, everything moving nice and smooth. Not hearing of any incidents or reports that should get in the way of your drive. So when you hop in the car, be sure to start your morning off with KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM where you can get even more team traffic updates. And coming up on CBS 2 News, the Steelheads have one more chance to turn things around in the Kelly Cup Finals. Why they need to win tomorrow night's game. This is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 555 on your Thursday. Welcome back. The Eagle Rodeo has officially kicked off in their new location. 
The Eagle Rodeo started back in 2001, first in downtown, then Avamore, and now this year, the rodeo has new grounds donated by the City of Eagle with more parking and easier access. The Eagle Rodeo now going on through June 10th. Tickets, they can be purchased at any human being location as well as D&B Supply. And the Steelheads, they're on the verge of losing the Kelly Cup Series. They lost last night to the Florida Everblades. They're now down three games to zip. Game four is tomorrow in Florida. They have to be perfect, winning four games in a row to get to the Kelly Cup. Well, FIFA is laying out the plan to individually play e pay each player participating in the Women's World Cup next month. Now, those on the winning team will earn $270,000 each, while the rest of the participating players will each receive $30,000. This means more than half of the tournament's $110 million prize pool is guaranteed to go straight to the players. The move is part of the FIFA's goal to reach equal pay between male and female athletes by 2027. This year's tournament is scheduled to kick off July 20th in Australia and New Zealand. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, a crowded race for president with several GOP candidates announcing their bid this week. How the number of choices may impact who gets the nomination. Plus, a new program may help veterans address their mental health for free. We take a look at Strive. You're watching CBS 2 News this morning. Your local news and weather continue all day on IdahoNews.com. Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. Good morning, I'm Vasily Varlamos. A chance of thunderstorms around the entire Gem State today. However, tonight's storms are looking weaker than the past two nights. I'll give you an update on those coming up. Good morning, I'm Ashley Carter. And coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, officials in Portland passing some new rules. The impact it's set to have on the city's homeless. Good morning, I'm Sarah Jacobson. This morning, construction here in Boise becoming a real headache for local businesses. How they say they're being impacted. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning. Thank you for waking up with us. You're taking a live look at Indian Creek Plaza this morning. It is Thursday or Friday Eve as we like to call it around here. It is June 8th, 2023. Yeah, we've had some crazy weather over the past few days and that's just putting it lightly. Yeah, heavy rain and winds, hail, not to mention the lightning that actually hit our station earlier this week. <laughs> and it's not quite over yet either. <laughs> we got some more storms on the way, likely going to impact the West Central and Boise Mountains. But we also had a ton of wind last night too. We could see some thunderstorms develop through Friday here in the Treasure Valley and also in the mountains as well. But last night we didn't get the downpour we got on Tuesday, but boy, we got the wind. Yes, we did. Take a look at this. It took down branches across Boise, even some trees. Now this tree was on the westbound side of Park Center near Apple Street and there was another one further down the street. And hopefully your luck with this storm wasn't as bad as mine. I did have to deal with a little bit of flooding here at my apartment. Here's a look at a video of that. It's had some standing water in my apartment as well due to that strong storm that we had on Tuesday. And we did see some heavy winds yesterday along with some downpours in some areas. Again, that rain was much lighter yesterday, but we do have a chance of some heavy rain over in the West Central and Boise Mountains. They could see up to two inches of rain today. That's why a flood watch will take effect at noon today, and that'll likely last through the evening for those areas. And we we have a severe weather outlook for the entire gem state today. We could see some heavy rain as in, in many of those areas where those storms are going to be, and we could see those wind gusts reach up to 35 miles here in the upper treasure miles an hour here in the upper treasure valley. Now, in terms of the precipitation over the next week, we may see some more scattered showers on Friday morning, but after that, that precipitation is going to drop off. We'll likely see some partly cloudy skies throughout the weekend, and we may see a few isolated showers, but that precipitation is looking like this weekend. And then after that, we're going to see some precipitation later on next week with the best chance of precipitation coming on Tuesday. I'll give you a look at the extended forecast coming up in just a few minutes. And many of you, like Vasily, also captured photos and videos during that storm. This photo was taken near the Caldwell Sunny Slope area by J.P. Jones. 
If you have weather photos, CBS2 wants to see them. Just go to IdahoNews.com slash chime in. And Vasily will be back with more on your weather in just a bit. But first. New this morning, former Vice President Mike Pence wasting no time on the campaign trail. He participated in a CNN town hall last night, just hours after launching his bid for the White House. The event took place in Iowa and included questions from GOP voters. During the event, Pence touted his pro-life views and vowed to ban gender-affirming care for minors. Pence also criticized his former boss, Donald Trump, over the Capitol riots and for once calling Vladimir Putin a, quote, genius. Trump and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis are currently leading the field. The Supreme Court expected to release some decisions later on this morning. The court weighing several big decisions this month, including affirmative action in college admissions, certain LGBTQ rights, lawsuits over Biden's student loan forgiveness program, and voting rights. And New York Governor Katie Hochul urging residents to stay indoors saying the smoke from Canadian wildfires is making it unsafe to be outside. Now, Hochul emphasizing the poor air quality can impact everyone, not just those vulnerable populations. Now, in an effort to protect people, New York State making 1 million N95 masks available to the public. They'll be given out at state facilities, including state parks and subway stations, as well as through local governments. Hochul says the smoke could potentially clear over the weekend, but there's no guarantee it will stay away. Well, FBI agents are expected to transfer Jordan Vandersloot back to the U.S. today. Now, Vandersloot is the prime suspect in the disappearance of Natalie Holloway, the Alabama teen who was last seen with the Dutch National and two others 18 years ago in Aruba. He was indicted in 2010 on U.S. federal charges of extortion and wire fraud. Now, that was in connection with the plot to sell information about the whereabouts of Holloway's remains. A team is expected to return to Alabama with Vandersloot after he is returned to the U.S. authorities. He has been held at a Peru prison since 2012 when he was convicted and sentenced to 28 years in prison for the murder of 21-year-old Stephanie Flores. Will change coming to the streets of Portland. Starting as of next month, it'll be illegal for homeless people to camp outside during the day following a late vote last night by the city council. Next month, that daytime camping ban goes into effect across Portland, along with other restrictions for sleeping outside. Mayor Ted Wheeler, Commissioners Dan Ryan and Renee Gonzalez voting in favor, saying crime and drugs, drug use has to be addressed. We have a chemical warfare, basically. We're hearing every single day. We're seeing it every day on the streets of Portland. We need to show progress on unsanctioned camping. But not everyone agrees with that direction. Sitting in the front row, a silent protest. They say the punishment could lead to homelessness being treated as a crime. We need multiple tools. We need shelter beds. Uh, we need these temporary alternative shelter sites, which are also for people who maybe won't access, uh, you know, uh, traditional shelters and they need another form of um, engagement and service. While the new restrictions go into effect next month, the mayor's office says enforcement won't be phased in until later. And back here in Boise, construction causing some problems for local businesses as several apartment high rises are going up and reconstruction on 11th Street continues. Now nearby businesses say the headache just isn't worth it. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of communication between the different entities involved and there's a lot of passing the buck. So somebody else is always to blame and there's not really anybody who can be held accountable. Jacob Brazonic, co-owner of Three Peat Vintage, says construction delays keep piling on. At one point, his main entrance was blocked off to shoppers, he says. Access to stores also impacting the record exchange, according to co-owner Chad Dryden. I see even more challenging the parking has been some of the streets closures. At one point we had both Idaho and 11th Street closed at the same time over a weekend and weekends are our busiest times. The economic development team gave an update to Boise City Council on construction problems earlier this week. Not that much can be done about the immediate problems, but in the future the team hopes to better coordinate with ACHD, setting limits on where the closures happen and for how long. Well, big news for higher education in the Treasure Valley. The College of Western Idaho expanding, adding several new buildings over the next several years. Three major projects are in the works. 
groundbreaking on the first building is in the next six months. CWI's president, Gordon Jones, saying the college has grown in tandem with the Treasure Valley. This represents the continued development and the growth that we see in the Valley and as a community college, our need to meet that growth. Here at 100 acres on our Nampa campus, this is the perfect footprint for meeting that need for today, tomorrow, and into our children's generations. For more information on the expansion, just head to our website. Well, folks, we've had some stormy evenings over the past two days, but we've had some sunny mornings much different this morning. We're waking up to some cloudy skies around the Treasure Valley and around much of southern Idaho at this point as some storms are moving across eastern Oregon and impacting us here in the Treasure Valley as well. We're actually seeing some showers over near Meridian right now. We're also seeing some showers over in Ontario. They've been seeing showers for the past hour or so near the Oregon Idaho border. But for many of us here in the Treasure Valley, we're waking up to those cloudy skies. Temperature is actually quite mild out there this morning. We're sitting at 66. Six degrees here in Boise with an easterly wind of about eight miles an hour. Not affecting that feels like temperature at all. Staying true to form at 66 degrees. Now we'll likely see those cloudy skies throughout the morning and most of the afternoon as well. Later on this evening, we may start to see some clouds break up and see a few sun breaks. However, we may also start to see some storms move in later on this evening as well. And in terms of wind speeds, we'll see a top wind speed of 14 miles an hour as those storms start to move in. Again, most of those storms are going to impact the mountains, but we could see some storms here in the Treasure Valley. Wind gusts could reach up to 30 35 miles an hour in parts of the upper Treasure Valley. And then in terms of temperatures, we're reaching the upper 70s at around noon, leading to our high today of 80 degrees, expected to arrive between 3 and 4 p.m. Now, over the next couple of days, we'll still have that thunderstorm chance in the afternoon and evenings, likely lasting through Friday. High temperature is going to be approaching or would be in the 80s, and we'll likely see partly cloudy skies this weekend as well. Here's a look at the next five days. We'll see those temperatures drop down to 79 degrees on Friday, which is our average for this time of year. But after that, temperatures will jump back to 80 degrees on Saturday. We'll actually jump back into the mid 80s on Sunday. We're looking at a high 85 degrees then and then temperatures drop down to 83 degrees on Monday. Now we are going to see those high temperatures staying in the low to mid 80s over the next couple of days after Monday. I'll give you a look at the extended forecast here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you a team traffic all morning long. And as we take a look out there at 610 this Thursday morning, let's send it out to Ron O'Brien in the News Talk KBOI traffic studios for a look at our morning commute. We are doing just fine. 84, nice and quiet this time of the morning. That's usually the case. Eastbound, even in Meridian. Had overnight paving on Eagle Road. That did get wrapped up around the top of the hour or just before. Uh, the work continues on Eagle Island, basically north of Banbury. Uh, you have to be a little bit careful in that general area, even around Chendon, where they've uh, paved recently. Transition from new to old pavement or vice versa can be pretty bumpy, so something to keep in mind there. Traffic is light, all non-freeway routes right now. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. And when you hop in the car and start your morning, be sure to start it off with KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for even more team traffic updates. Straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, a crowded race for president with several GOP candidates announcing their bid this week. How the number of choices may impact who gets the nomination. Plus, Biden's student loan forgiveness still on the table for now. The challenges it faces next. And it's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at yesterday's question. Baby boomers, they're more than two times as likely to do this daily compared to millennials. What is it? The answer, take vitamins. Now for today's question, the average person touches this five times an hour without even realizing it. What is it? This is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 614. Welcome back. We're already in the double digits with several new contenders joining the growing list of Republican presidential candidates just this week alone. But how many is too many? Janae Bowens explains the impact of having several political options. There's about a dozen notable Republicans vying for their party's presidential nomination. Political experts tell me the long list could be solidifying a shoe in You know, I haven't made a decision yet. Hector Rivera has more than 500 days to decide who will get his vote for president. We need to find somebody that can bring people together. He's got a lot of Republican choices. 
Chris Christie, Tim Scott, Nikki Haley, Mike Pence, Vivek Ramaswamy, Ryan Binkley, Larry Elder, Doug Burgum, Perry Johnson, Asa Hutchinson, Ron DeSantis, and former President Donald Trump. In 2016, one of the ways that Trump made it to the presidency was by famously winning over a field of 16 others who were running against him. Head of the Presidential Leadership Initiative at the Bipartisan Policy Center, Tevi Troy, says voters aren't really paying attention to the number of presidential candidates, and there's a big gap between what folks know about Trump compared to the others. The question is, will those 6 to 10 split the non-Trump vote, allowing Trump to get through with the plurality again? According to 538, Trump is leading with 53.8 percent. Troy says attention should now turn to the debates. He blew away the other candidates in the last series of debates. Oh, I know. You're a tough guy, Jeb. And and we need to have a leader. First of all, Rand Paul shouldn't even be on this stage. This time it's going to be different because every candidate up there is going to have a plan for Trump. The first Republican presidential primary debate is in Milwaukee on August 23rd. Now, if there are enough qualifying contenders, there will be a second debate the day after. I'm Janae Bowens for the National Desk. And the Biden White House's federal student loan forgiveness program is now moving forward after President Biden vetoes a bill to strike it down. However, the bill still faces legal challenges and opposition from Republicans and some moderate Democrats. He's continued to pursue new government spending from his nearly trillion dollar student loan giveaway to a budget that in a few short years would have a spending 10 trillion dollars annually. I'm not going to back down on my efforts to help tens of millions of working and middle class families. That's why I'm going to veto this bill. And don't forget, some of the same members of Congress who want to cut student aid personally received loans to keep their small businesses afloat during the pandemic. The legality of the loan forgiveness program is in the hands of the Supreme Court. The justices are expected to issue a decision on it as soon as today. The bill offers to forgive up to $20,000 in debt for students who went to college on Pell Grants and $10,000 for those without if specific requirements are met. And the new data showing air travel is rebounding and soaring toward pre-pandemic levels. That's despite high inflation and higher interest rates weighing on consumer spending. Still, airports becoming crowded and flight prices soar. Travel today looks much more like it did in 2019 than it has any of the past three years. So if you want to save some money this travel season, you may need to get creative. Consider flying on weekdays or less popular travel days when demand is lower and explore different airports. Sometimes nearby airports offer better deals. Airlines expect to make almost $10 billion this year despite economic slowdown. That's according to a new forecast released this week from the International Air Transport Association. All right, let's switch gears. Talk about weather. Vasily, very happy to have you back here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, apologies. Nice to be back. Yeah. yeah. Oh, apologies yeah. for that, that flooding that yeah, happened. Yeah, it was not the greatest <laughs> thing in the world, but you know, I have a lot of people dealing with the same issues. Mm-hmm. So hope everyone stayed safe out there during those storms. And also yeah. going back to the summer travel thing too. I mean, I know a lot of people struggled too mm-hmm. to get out with their flights. There was three mm-hmm. and four yeah. hour delays out on the tarmac too. Mm-hmm. So hope everyone was okay dealing with those storms both yesterday and the day before that. And I'm going to be fine all, all here too. I mean, my bar. <laughs> It's okay. Everything was fine. I watched it flood, so didn't have anything get damaged or anything. But we are going to deal with some more thunderstorms over in the West Central and the Boise Mountains later on this afternoon and evening. They may they are in a flood watch as well, so there could be some flooding over in those areas too. As this storm is getting quite some heavy winds over out the southeast right now, it is actually pushing that storm east or westbound right now and pushing some precipitation over into eastern Oregon right now. Now we are going to see some showers move over into eastern Oregon and also impact the West Central Mountains right now. The Long Valley going to continue to see showers throughout the morning and we'll also see some showers impact parts of Mountain Home this afternoon as well as those showers move into the region. We'll see some strong storms over the Oahe's as we head into tonight and then by tonight we'll just see some partly cloudy skies here in the Treasure Valley. Tomorrow morning we'll wake up to partly to mostly sunny skies as well. Then we'll start to see some more showers move in on Friday. Here's a look at high temperatures. We'll see a 
high at 80 degrees in Boise, Emmett and Caldwell. 79 looking like the high over in Nampa and Mountain Home and 81 going to be the high in Ontario. Then moving up to the mountains, 64 going to be the high in McCall. Here's a look at the seven day forecast. We'll have that chance of some evening showers both tonight and tomorrow night, but then on Saturday we'll likely see that precipitation move out of the region and the return to some partly cloudy skies. High temperature is going to jump into the mid 80s on Sunday and as we head into next week we may see some scattered showers on Monday and we'll see some partly cloudy skies as high temperatures stay between the low and mid 80s. Meanwhile, over in the mountains, they'll continue to see scattered thunderstorms both today, tomorrow and on Saturday and some showers are going to linger over in the mountains on Sunday, Monday and Tuesday. And as for those high temperatures, they'll stay in the upper 60s over the next three days, but then they'll jump into the low 70s as they head into next week. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there, let's get a traffic update from Ron O'Brien in the News Talk KBOI traffic studios. Doing okay. Uh, nothing major going with uh, ID4. Not much of any uh, merge slowing kicking in quite yet. And Meridian, good through Nampa as well, even around Garrity. There are uh, numerous construction projects, of course, road widening and in some cases full closures like Star Road between Highway 44 and 2026. A few more days scheduled for that closure. You'll have to use Highway 16 instead. Alternates uh, in that area, even east-westbound routes like 44 and 2026, good at this point this morning. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ron O'Brien. Thank you, Ron. And when you hop in the car and start your Thursday morning, be sure to turn your dial to 670 AM or 93.1 FM. That'll be KBOI for even more team traffic updates. Coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, a new program may help veterans address their mental health for free. We take a look at Strive. Plus, our kids struggling with mental health as well? How social media may be making an impact. This is CBS 2 News this morning. It's 624. Welcome back. A free program to help veterans and many others in need of mental health is expanding. Medical reporter Liz Bonet shares how Strive is now saving lives. Hey there, everybody. The Strive Mental Health Treatment Program reduces suicide attempts and saves lives. According to researchers working with members of our military, now they are expanding this program and is open to anyone nationwide. What started as pain from a leg injury in the Marine Corps eventually led Kelsey Chrisman to the Strive program. She said at the time she felt like I wasn't going anywhere. Everything was a mistake. Um, weirdly enough, my chain of command thought I was faking it. I'm like, no, like I hurt to walk. That hurt eventually led to a diagnosis of post-traumatic stress disorder. It got magnified, she says, when on the same side, she lost two of her toes in an accident at home. I had to take the time to realize that this is my new normal. The Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center runs the STRIVE program and provided this video. STRIVE stands for the Suicide and Trauma Reduction Initiative for Veterans. I spoke with Justin Baker, the director, about how it's a research program that actually provides treatment through virtual counseling for just two weeks. We do really rapid treatment so you can get better and back to your daily life. The results have been astounding. Baker says at least 7 in 10 who meet the criteria for the study of having PTSD or suicidal thoughts develop personalized crisis plans and coping skills. They continue to use those in times of emotional distress. In, in some ways, it's actually less painful because instead of dragging it out, you just get it done. People can set aside two weeks to focus on therapy much easier than they can set aside three months to focus on therapy. It's going to be hard, but it's going to be worth it. Here's what you need to know to sign up. There is a website as well as a phone number, 614-257-3877. All of this, again, free to you. And because of the virtual counseling option, you can get this help no matter where you live. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Now back to you. Well, last month, the Surgeon General issuing an advisory about the effects social media has on youth mental health. Heading into the summer, many parents thinking about setting boundaries between kids and their devices. The number of kids and teens with anxiety and depression, it shot up about 30% over recent years. According to the Department of Health and Human Services, many don't get the care that they need. Well, people who have trouble falling or staying asleep may be more likely to have a stroke. 
That's according to a study published in the Journal of the American Academy of Neurology. Now, those with at least one to four insomnia symptoms had a 16% increased risk of stroke compared to those with no sleep issues. Researchers noted that the symptoms do not cause strokes, only that there is an association. See, coming up on CBS 2 News, the president has a big meeting set for today at the White House, what he hopes to discuss with the UK's prime minister. And don't forget about our question of the day. We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. It's 629. Welcome back. Former Vice President Mike Pence wasting no time on the campaign trail. He participated in a CNN town hall just hours after launching his bid for the White House. The event took place in Iowa and included questions from GOP voters. During the event, Pence touted his pro-life values and vowed to ban gender-affirming care for minors. Pence also criticized his former boss, Donald Trump, over the Capitol riots and once calling Vladimir Putin a, quote, genius. But he pushed back when asked about the classified documents probe into the former president. We're the symbol of justice in the world. And the, the, the serious matter, which has already happened once in New York, of indicting a former president of the United States sends a terrible message to the world. I hope the DOJ thinks better of it and resolves these issues without an indictment. Sir Despite just announcing his campaign, Pence has been polling in the single digits with Trump and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis leading the field. Well, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen telling CNBC yesterday that she would not be surprised to see more banks consolidate. She says smaller banks are considering the move. That's in response to a growing pressure on earnings. Yellen also warns that banks are facing commercial real estate difficulties due to higher interest rates and remote work arrangements. But despite this, she projected a positive outlook for the banking system. My overall read is that the level of capital and liquidity uh, in the banking system is strong and that um, while well, there will be some pain associated with this, that banks should be able to handle the strain. Yellen's comments come after federal regulators seized and sold several mid-sized banks earlier this year, including Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank. Well, FBI agents are expected to transfer Jordan Vandersloot to the U.S. today. Vandersloot is the prime suspect in the disappearance of Natalie Holloway, the Alabama teen who was last seen with the Dutch National and two others 18 years ago in Aruba. He was indicted in 2010 on U.S. federal charges of extortion and wire fraud. Now, that was in connection with a plot to sell information about the whereabouts of Holloway's remains. A team is expected to return to Alabama with Vandersloot after he is turned over to U.S. authorities. He has been held at a Peru prison since 2012 when he was convicted and sentenced to 28 years in prison for the murder of 21-year-old Stephanie Flores. Well, change coming to the streets of Portland starting next month. It'll be illegal for homeless people to camp outside during the day. That's following a late vote last night by the city council. Next month, that daytime camping ban goes into effect across Portland, along with other restrictions for sleeping outside. Now, Mayor Ted Wheeler, Commissioners Dan Ryan and Renee Gonzalez voting in favor, saying crime and drug use has to be addressed. We have a chemical warfare, basically. We're hearing every single day. We're seeing it every day on the streets of Portland. We need to show progress on unsanctioned camping. But not everyone agreeing that this is the right direction. Sitting in the front row, a silent protest. They say the punishment could lead to homelessness being treated as a crime. We need multiple tools. We need shelter beds. Uh, we need these temporary alternative shelter sites, which are also for people who maybe won't access, uh, you know, uh, traditional shelters and they need another form of um, engagement and service. While the new restrictions go into effect next month, the mayor's office says enforcement won't be phased in until later. Well, New York City suing more than 30 counties in their state for refusing to accommodate migrants. The move coming as the city struggles to find housing for asylum seekers. Last month, Mayor Eric Adams started to look to hotels outside of the city to accommodate those new arrivals. 
But the move triggered, triggered several county governments to issue emergency declarations barring migrants from staying at local hotels on the city's time. Now, Rockland and Orange counties were among the first to issue such orders. Officials say they can't afford to house those migrants. Well, Florida claiming responsibility for flying three dozen migrants from Texas to California over the weekend, saying that trip was voluntary. Meantime, officials in Sacramento aren't buying it. I don't want to talk about who may have done this, who likely did this. Um, they, he, are not worth dignifying. California investigators saying some of those migrants told them they were recruited with the promises of employment. The state's attorney general investigating whether those involved in the transport violated laws against false imprisonment or kidnapping. Now this comes after Florida transported nearly 50 migrants from Texas to Martha's Vineyard last year, which is also under investigation. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis saying he's just trying to help. Those migrants were being treated horribly by Biden. They were hungry, homeless. They had no, no opportunity at all. The state of Florida, it was volunteer, offered transport to sanctuary jurisdictions. Now, Democrats in California are arguing that those migrants are being used as political pawns. And President Biden will welcome Native Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg to the White House on Monday. The two leaders are expected to talk about the upcoming NATO summit in Lithuania. White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre says they will review preparations together. And including the work to further strengthen allied, uh, allied deterrence and defense, build on the 2014 Whale Summit Defense Investment Pledge and deepen NATO's partnership. The talks will also focus on allies' support for Ukraine amid Russia's ongoing invasion. The NATO summit is scheduled for July 11th through July 13th. Meantime, President Biden is hosting the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom at the White House today. The White House says Biden and Sunak are expected to discuss Ukraine, China and international cooperation. The president has already met with Sunak multiple times since he became Prime Minister back in October. The Associated Press reports that he is also expected to push for the UK's Defense Secretary to succeed the outgoing NATO Secretary General. And Taiwan activated its defense systems this morning after reporting 37 Chinese military aircraft flying into the island's air defense zone. Now, China, which views democratically governed Taiwan as its own territory, has over the past three years regularly flown its air force into the skies near the island, though not into Taiwan's territorial airspace. It's the latest in a series of recent actions that have raised tensions with Taiwan and the U.S. Back here in Boise, construction causing problems for local businesses as several apartment high rises are going up and reconstruction on 11th Street continues. Well, now nearby businesses say the headache just isn't worth it. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of communication between the different entities involved and there's a lot of passing the buck. So somebody else is always to blame and there's not really anybody who can be held accountable. Jacob Brzonik, co-owner of 3P Vintage, says construction delays, they keep piling on. At one point, his main entrance was blocked off to his shoppers. Access to stores also impacting the record exchange, according to co-owner Chad Dryden. I see even more challenging the parking has been some of the streets closures. At one point, we had both Idaho and 11th Street closed at the same time over a weekend, and weekends are our busiest times. The economic development team gave an update to Boise City Council on the construction problems earlier this week, though not much can be done about the immediate problems. But in the future, the team says they hope to better coordinate with ACHD, setting limits on where those closures happen and for how long. And big news for higher education in the Treasure Valley. The College of Idaho, College of Western Idaho, expanding. They're adding several new buildings over the next several years. Three major projects are in the works, with groundbreaking on the first building set for the next six months. CWI's president, Gordon Jones, saying the college, it's grown in tandem with the Treasure Valley. This represents the continued development and the growth that we see in the valley and as a community college, our need to meet that growth. Here at 100 acres on our Nampa campus, this is the perfect footprint for meeting that need for today, tomorrow, and into our children's generations. For more information on the expansion, just head to our website.
Well, folks, we've been waking up to some sunny skies over the past two days, along with those stormy evenings coming later on in the day. But as for today, we're waking up to some cloudy skies with some storms moving across much of southwestern Idaho. Now we are seeing some showers over in the Long Valley, but we're also seeing some showers here in the Treasure Valley as well. We're seeing a few showers near Ontario right now and near the Oregon Idaho border, but also parts of the lower valley right now seeing a few scattered showers right now near Caldwell and Nampa. They're seeing a bit of showers, some showers sticking around near Meridian as well. But as for here in Boise, see we're just seeing some cloudy skies right now 66 degrees the temperature out there quite a mild morning for us we're sitting with an eastern wind of about eight, eight miles an hour not affecting that feels like temperature at all staying true to format 66 degrees now we'll likely see those cloudy skies throughout the morning and possibly throughout the afternoon but then later on in the afternoon and into the early evening we may see a few sun breaks as some more storms move into the region as well now we'll see a top wind speed of 14 miles an hour we could see those wind gusts reach up to 35 miles an hour in parts of the upper valley and then temperatures will jump up into the mid 70s around noon, leading to a high today of 80 degrees expected to arrive between 3 and 4 p.m. today. Now we do have a flood watch in effect for the upper Weezer River, the West Central Mountains and the Boise Mountains. That'll take effect at noon today and last throughout the evening. They could see up to two inches of rain over in those areas later on this morning and this afternoon. They're already seeing some showers right now. Now we have a chance of some evening thunderstorms through Friday, both tonight and tomorrow night. High temperature is going to be in the 80s over the next couple of days. We'll also see a partly cloudy week as well. Here's a look at the next five days in terms of temperatures. We're seeing a high of 80 degrees around the valley today and high temperatures are going to drop down around our average tomorrow. High in Boise going to be 79 degrees, but we'll jump back to 80 degrees on Saturday and high temperatures will actually warm about five degrees from Saturday to Sunday back up into the mid 80s and then we'll likely stay between the low and mid 80s over the next couple of days after Sunday. I'll give you a look at the extended forecast here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take a live look out there at 641 this morning, let's get an update from Ron O'Brien in the News Talk KBOI traffic studios. Slowdown's been uh, fairly minimal so far this morning. I-84 eastbound primary flow of traffic crowding up just a little bit. Merge areas like 10 Mile Meridian Road. It's all pretty minimal so far. A little more volume starting to show up some spots even away from the freeways kicking in uh, here and there but nothing major going other than uh, construction spots watch out with all the lane restrictions on uh, 2026 around star road closure of star road still in that area to the north highway 16 as the alternate and 16 holding up just fine as is 2026 eastbound right now from the news talk kboi traffic studio i'm ron o'brien Thank you, Ron. And when you hop in the car, be sure you turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM for even more team traffic updates. Now it's time for our question of the day. The question, the average person touches this five times an hour without realizing it. I'm going to switch up my guess and I'm just going to say your phone. I feel like that's more common than like a, a remote control, which is what my guess from the first hour was. But what do you guys think? Yeah, I like that one a lot. I'm going to stick with my um, answer from the, or my guess from the last hour, which was your hair. Mm -hmm. I what like that you? one. I'm also going to stick with my guess from the first hour and go with your face. Yeah, <laughs> yep. great guess. I like it. All right, folks at home, let's see what you have to say. Richard says your eyes. Oh. Yep, going with the trend of something on your face or around <laughs> your face. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Douglas says your knees. Oh, mm -hmm. right. didn't even Good think guess. about that. Let's see if we can get toes, knees and toes. <laughs> yeah, I was All about right. To say. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, Richard. Again, going with eyes. Yeah, I yeah. think that's a good one. It's a great guess for sure. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, if you think you know the answer, you still have 15 minutes to get those guesses in. We will read the reveal the answer at the end of the show right before CBS this morning. And coming up on CBS 2 News this morning, air quality becoming dangerous across the Northeast. A look at the warnings in place there this morning. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. Well, here at CBS 2, we know this firsthand. Lightning here in the West, it's a big concern. Officials down in California say storms have already sparked several blazes in the northern part of the state. Our Sinclair sister station in Redding spoke with Alex McBath, who is the assistant forest manager on the Shasta Trinity. He says they have strategies in place during fire season for when these fires do pop up. We can't disregard them. We have to pay attention and manage all the fires. So uh, whether it's a lightning fire or a human caused fire or some type of equipment fire, we have to respond to that fire. 
those are prioritized, um, you know, firefighter and public safety first, number one life, and then uh, private property and then resources. The North State is no stranger to lightning fires from the August complex in 2020 to the monument in McFarland fires in 2021. So McMath says these are a top priority. Thankfully, conditions are favorable right now, but the North State heats up quickly, which can cause a fast spread from fires later in the season. And take a look at this. Hundreds of uncontrolled forest fires blazing across Canada, threatening critical infrastructure, forcing evacuations, and sending a blanket of smoky air wafting over U.S. cities. Now this year, flames, this year's flames moving rapidly in the country's east, making it the worst ever start to the season. About 9.4 million acres have already been burned reportedly. That's around 15 times the 10 year average and all those blazes sending smoke down to the northeast of the US. Now it's creating air quality concerns and you can see it. Our Sinclair sister station in Albany, New York says they've seen smoke move in and out throughout the capital region. Since Monday, the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation and the State Department of Health They've issued air quality warnings due to the sheer amount of smoke. It smells like fire like all day. Most people are wearing masks. I couldn't find one and I was late this morning, so I didn't. In almost every region around New York, health advisories are being put in place from the poor air quality. Officials recommending school districts keep kids inside and suspend those outdoor activities. And a similar site in Washington, D.C. Our Sinclair sister station there says it did not take long for airplanes to vanish in the haze. People should consider staying indoors as much as they can. If they have to go outside, consider staying safe by limiting strenuous activity. So, for example, if you were going to go for a jog today, consider going for a walk. If you work outside, uh, consider taking frequent breaks, drinking water. And I think all of us remember these. Consider wearing a face mask if you're out as well. Leaders in the area say they are keeping an eye on the air quality levels leading into a very busy weekend in the district. And because of this smoky air, Major League Baseball postponing games over on the East Coast. Now last night's Yankees game, it was canceled. Yeah, look at that air quality. Now the Tigers and the Phillies were also canceled. Even the WNBA postponing games and they even played door games inside. And a popular summer festival in Brooklyn canceled its opening night. The Celebrate Brooklyn Festival, which runs a summer long series of outdoor concerts in the borough, apologized for the cancellation, but they deemed it necessary because of the haze. Now things were supposed to kick off last night, but now it's unclear when things are set to begin. Ooh. It's eerie. Red, I never like the look of red sky. Yeah, it totally yeah. makes sense. I mean, the air quality, mm. the second worst in the world over in New York right now, right behind Delhi and India. So just mm. terrible conditions out there mm. right now. Hope everyone's staying safe. Yeah, definitely yeah. think about Canada as mm -hmm. well as the Northeast. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and very different conditions back here at home with these mm -hmm. thunderstorms we've been experiencing. Yeah, yeah heavy thunderstorms yeah. over the past two mm -hmm. days. The precipitation wasn't as heavy yesterday, but we were still dealing with those gusty winds. Mm -hmm. And that storm actually getting weaker and weaker as it's moving in through the gem state. Now we're seeing some strong atmospheric winds coming from the east right now, and that's actually pushing that storm from east to west. Now we're seeing those storms moving over eastern Oregon and parts of even the Treasure Valley this morning as well. And we'll see likely some storms impact the west central and Boise Mountains later on this afternoon and evening. And they're already seeing some showers over in the Long Valley this morning. Those will continue throughout the morning again as the storm continues to move east to west. Now we'll see a few showers impact the central mountains later on in the morning and possibly into the afternoon. And then we'll see some strong thunderstorms develop over the Owyhees later on in the evening. However, most of those are just favoring eastern Oregon. We may actually stay dry in parts of the Treasure Valley later on this afternoon and evening. However, some scattered showers may move into the parts of the lower valley later this evening as well. Now tomorrow morning we make up to, we may wake up to some partly cloudy skies as well. Temperature is going to be quite mild tomorrow morning, just like they are this morning. High temperature is going to be in the 80s today in Caldwell, Nampa, er, Emmett, and Boise. It's going to be 79 degrees, the high over in Nampa and Mountain Home, and 81 going to be the high in Ontario. Then moving up to the mountains, 64 going to be the high in McCall today. We do have a chance of some showers both tonight and tomorrow night, but after that, we'll see some partly cloudy skies throughout the weekend. High temperature is going to jump into the mid 80s on Sunday, and we'll stay between the low 
and mid 80s as we head into next week. Meanwhile, over in the mountains, they're going to see high temperatures in the upper 60s over the next three days as they'll likely see some scattered thunderstorms. Then they'll see some showers move into the region on Sunday, Monday and Tuesday. High temperature is going to jump into the low 70s and they'll likely stay there throughout much of next week. They'll see some partly cloudy skies returning to the mountains on Wednesday. Thank you, Vasily. CBS 2 and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. And as we take one last live look out there this morning, let's check in with Ron O'Brien in the News Talk KBOI traffic studios. It has been pretty calm, really, all the way around. There's been uh, very minimal crowding, I-84, a little heavy volume here and there, or under the limit type slowing, but uh, not much between Nampa and the 184 split. And uh, elsewhere, doing quite well so far. Volume will start to kick in more so, of course, uh, next hour. Getting ready to get out the door, do the uh, 7 o'clock hour drive. You know it can get a little busy. It's been pretty quiet, even around Star Road and Highway 2026 uh, coming east or Highway 16 southbound tying into 2026. Closure of Star Road is still in place there south of Star. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bland. Thank you, Ron. Some important things to keep in mind as you hit the road this morning. And when you hop in the car, don't forget to turn on KBOI on 670 AM or 93.1 FM, where you can get even more team traffic updates. Well, coming up on CBS 2 News, the Steelheads have one more chance to turn things around in the Kelly Cup Finals. Why they need to win tomorrow night's game. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. It's 655. Welcome back. The Eagle Rodeo officially kicking off in their new location. The rodeo first started back in 2001, first in downtown, then Avamore. Now this year, the rodeo is at their new grounds, donated by the City of Eagle. It has more parking and easier access. The Eagle Rodeo going on now through June 10th. Tickets, they can be purchased at any human being location, as well as D&B Supply. And the Steelheads, they're on the verge of losing the Kelly Cup Series. Now they lost last night to the Florida Everblades. They're now down three games to zip. Game four tomorrow in Florida. Now they have to be perfect, winning four games in a row to get the Kelly Cup. We'll see how they do. Well, FIFA is laying out the plan to individually play, pay each player participating in the Women's World Cup next month. Those on the winning team will earn $270,000 each, while the rest of the participating players will each earn $30,000. This means more than half of the tournament's $110 million prize pool is guaranteed to go straight to the players. Cool stuff. All right. Yeah. Well, now it's time for our question of the day. <laughs> and that question is the average person touches this five times an hour without realizing it. What is it? That answer, their nose. Oh, we got everything on their nose. face except for yeah. their nose. I don't know how we missed yeah. that. All right, folks. Well, we hope you have a great rest of your day. We'll see you back here for your news and weather at 11 a.m. Take the news with you on the radio. News Talk KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com. CBS Mornings is coming up next. And watch for your next local newscast on CBS 2 today at 11. Connect with CBS 2 for local news and weather on IdahoNews.com.